Well, let's turn our attention to this now. In a moment of political irony, the ANC Secretary General is expected uh, to, of course, appear in the Bloemfontein Magistrates Court today. And this is on the soil of the birthplace of the ANC. So back in January the 8th, that was in 1912, uh, men met at the uh, Wasselian Church, culminating in the formation of the African National Congress under the leadership of John Dube. In fact, the Free State is deeply entrenched in the rich history of political formations that have shaped South Africa. To speak to us about the historical significance of today's big story that's unfolding in the Free State, and in particular in Bloemfontein, let's bring in historian at the University of the Free State, Dr. Ticha Twala. Dr. Twala, thanks very much for making time for this very incredibly interesting conversation. Welcome to the AM Report. So the events that are unfolding in Bloemfontein this morning and are likely to do so throughout the course of the day are being touted as a, a turning point, really, for not only the ANC, but the political infighting taking place in the organization. But it's more specifically important because it's also at a location where the party was founded back in 1912. Help us make sense of these, if you like, dynamics as we build up to how things are likely to unfold. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me start by greeting all your, your viewers at home. Uh, yes, indeed, all eyes are uh, on the City of Roses today in Bloemfontein due to the appearance of Ace Mahashule to, to, to the Bloemfontein court. But it is important that we, we also unpack the historical trajectory and evolution and development of the NC in the Free State and particularly in Bloemfontein. We are all aware that uh, the NC was formed in Bloemfontein and, uh, in 1912. But we also need to understand the dynamics of the time in order for us to understand what is happening today. When the NC was formed in 1912, it was then formed as what we used to call the South African Native National Congress. And then the idea was to form a unity of black organizations that were going to fight against uh, the might of the oppressors then. And that happened as early as after the end of the Anglo Boer War or the South African War in 1902. And then after the signing of the Treaty of Verenaging which brought a peace between the British and the Boers on the 31st of May in, 19, uh, in 1902. Therefore, it is important that we, we, we tap into that history as far as that era in order to understand what happened therefore later. Right. And, and then, know, if, if I can come in there, um, Doc, you know, part of why it's also important uh, on a day like this is because my understanding is that, you know, um, figures like Ace Makashule were among prominent party members who were actually at the forefront of helping the ANC re-establish itself after being banned back in the 1990s. What contributions did he make to an organization that he's now accused of breaking down? Without any doubt, as a political leader after the unbanning of the ANC, uh, Mr. Makashule played a significant role. You would recall that uh, after the unbanning, the ANC had different leaders from different quarters. Uh, some of the leaders were coming from exile, and then some of the leaders were within uh, the country and then operating under the banner of the United Democratic Front. And then some of the leaders were coming from Robben Island. Therefore, it was incumbent upon the ANC as a movement and an organization which was gunning to, for power to become the ruling party in South Africa, to consolidate everything and to consolidate all the leadership from the three spheres that I've just mentioned in order for them to have the leadership that was strong, that was going to contest the elections in 1994 and subsequently taking power from the National Party. Without a doubt, Isma Hashule also, together with other uh, colleagues played a significant role in this regard. The, the Free State in its own was divided into two sections. We had the Northern region of the Free State and the Southern region of the Free State. And Esma Hashule happened to be from the North. 
the Paris region. And then we had other leaders from the South. Therefore, it was important for, for the organization itself of the movement to, 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 to merge the two in order to form one united ANC in the free state in the post uh, uh, unbanning era. Yeah. And then the establishment of the branches was, was important. And it is it, it will be suicidal for us to, to think that one person could have done that. But there, there were a number of leaders in the free state who worked together hand in glove to establish the organization. And hence the organization was established. And then hence Isma Khashule in some subsequent years became uh, the chairperson of the free state ANC. Right. And in the lead up to that, of course, I mean, you know, the factionalism, according to many people, manifested in various ways. Take us to, to one of those significant moments. So I think it must have been about 1999. Thabo is said to have overlooked Ace Makashule, in fact, for the position of premier in the Free State. I think he appointed uh, Winky Direko at that time. Uh, Makashule still ascended to be chair of the ANC a few, a few years later, nonetheless. What impact do you think that had for the ANC, especially uh, when we consider, you know, things like long-standing gripes and factionalism within the governing party? It, it, is, it would be unfair to think that factionalism only, uh, is only within the ANC. Uh, one can, can, can bring forth evidence that uh, most of the organizations whether in exile or inside the country, experienced factionalism. Therefore, that was not immune within the ANC. Then in the free state, yes, obviously, there were, there were some factions and then divisions and which were part and parcel of the evolution of the movement itself. And yes, in, in 1999, uh, the former president appointed uh, Mayor Winky Direko to become uh, the premier of the free state. And then uh, Dr. Esma Hashule was then uh, the chairperson of, of, of the Free State. And then that, in, in subsequent years, uh, 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 led to what one would call uh, the division of power and the two centers of power. That you have a person who is not the premier becoming the chairperson of, of, of the province, and then you have another person who is the premier who is not the chairperson of the, of, of the province. And that in itself created a lot of, of tensions because politically, uh, the chairperson will be having much more power in terms of the organization and the premier will be having much more power in terms of being the political head of the government. And then that created a lot of tensions because where do you take a cue from? And then where do you take instructions from? Are you taking instructions from uh, your political constituency, which is the ANC as the premier, because you are the premier because of the ticket of the ANC. But if uh, the premier and the, the leader of the ANC in the province are not seeing eye to eye, therefore that will lead to, to conflicts and to confrontations yeah. at some point. It's very easy, in fact, to see how that can uh, sort of have an outcome where leaders are pulling in different directions, even just in the free state. And perhaps that's just the backstop. Very quickly before I let you go, I mean, in, I think it was about 1960s or so, there was a conference where the ANC was said to have been marred in things like, you know, leaders being accused of um, being out of touch with their constituencies, uh, careerism within the governing party. Now that we're here, now that this moment is being touted as, uh, you know, a, a great moment for the reckoning of the governing party, do you get a sense that history is repeating itself? Uh, definitely. It is important also to understand the history in order to understand where we are today. If we wanted to, to analyze and contextualize uh, our current uh, political uh, debates and what is happening. It was in 1969 uh, during the Morogoro Conference in Tanzania, the Morogoro Conference of the NC, whereby the leadership of the NC was accused of losing touch with, with the masses. And then uh, Chris Honey came with what was called the Honey Memorandum. And it was, it, it was tension in that meeting. Therefore, one wouldn't say because of that, the ANC failed to, to solve its own problems. There were challenges. Some people were expelled within the ANC. We can talk about the group of eight within the ANC who were expelled within, uh, within the organization, but the ANC continued. 
Therefore, what is happening today, it is not new. It is part and parcel of, of history and the evolution of the ANC itself. And there are radical changes within the ANC. Therefore, when one reads within that, one should also contextualize it and understand that these things are happening in organizations because you are dealing with human beings and then you are dealing with ethical people. And at some point, those people are unethical in their leadership. Therefore, it is important to understand that and to understand that such issues and such debates will ensue within the organization for future. And then we need to learn from the past in order to solve our current problems very interesting perspective. Thank you very much for helping us glance back so that we get a sense of how we can move forward. I really appreciate your time and weighing in on this important development. Dr. Ticha Twala is a historian with the University of the Free State, speaking specifically about the significance of the Free State, uh, where Ace Makashile was premier and is now set to appear in court on a raft of corruption allegations.